and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a Nitty Yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this new episode in this rather dark day. <laughs> so, grainy podcast it is. But um, I actually have quite a color uh, full episode. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. I also put some lipstick uh, in a desperate effort to brighten the mood. So, yay! Um, first off, thank you so much for all your well wishes for my dog. I mentioned in the last podcast that our bigger dog was having um, uh, some issues and has been brought to the vet in emergency. He had a surgery, but everything is fine. He is recovering, in fact, too well for his own good. And uh, yeah, the, the little baby is very happy to have him back and they're all nice and actually sleeping <laughs> in their bed right now. So all is quiet and back to normal. So yeah, I have a few projects to share with you. I have a little uh, announcement to make um, for a pattern release as well as a pattern sale that I am having because even though I am recording this podcast very early in advance, today, <laughs> the day I am releasing this episode, is my birthday. Yay, happy birthday to me. Um, so I will be running a little pattern sale. So all of my patterns on Ravelry will be 27% off with the code 27 because I am turning 27 in case that wasn't clear. So all the details will be in the description down below. So if you have been wanting to try one of my patterns for a while, uh, it is the occasion to uh, get them at a discount. I do like offering bigger discounts from time to time because I know not everyone can afford the patterns at their full price. I really appreciate whenever someone um, uh, voluntarily doesn't use a discount code because they feel that they are able to afford the full price of the pattern but when you don't uh, I really like to offer the possibility for you to get a sale so this is like my yearly <laughs> birthday sale it is now it will be running until next wednesday which will be the 5th of june i believe anyway starting from now you can get um, this discount out of my patterns so i have also a new pattern release to announce uh, because uh, it's a very special pattern to me and i wanted to release it on my birthday as well and then i have two works in progress to share uh, to new works in progress that you have never seen and I also have a little bit of a yarn show at the end of the episode so this is what it's going to be like. I have sort of did all of that in a messy way but <laughs> I hope you understood. Um, I'm gonna start with the podcast. You can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below so if you want to skip anything feel free to jump ahead. I also put links to everything that I talk about and like I said, my patterns for sale on Ravelry along with the birthday sale that is happening at the moment. So yeah, I, I'm going to start right away with the pattern release and I have just put live on Ravelry. Also as a celebration of my birthday, a shawl. A shawl pattern that you all liked very much as I was showing it and I don't remember at what stage it was last time I shared it but um, yes the soul shawl is now live on Ravelry so this is my birthday pattern it also works with the 27% discount so again it will be code 27 simply as simple as that and yay so the color is a bit sad looking at the moment but um feel free to look at the pattern pictures as i am very happy about them which is rare enough to be mentioned but yes yeah, so this is a really big blankety like shawl 
and it starts at one point basically you cast on here you work a little triangular shape just so that you have enough stitches to make this border which consists on of two different motifs this really simple braid cable which you pretty much don't have to read the chart for the pattern includes a whole bunch of video tutorials and photographs to basically make this very easy and intuitive to knit. It is simple uh, to follow and with the videos you actually only have to track this one which is this beautiful leaf motif that I really love and uh, I keep wanting to incorporate in my designs. Uh, this is not a complicated motif to work. Uh, there is a couple of peculiar uh, increases and cables but again I have made video tutorials for them so the pattern uh, will help you through that and yeah so once you can start the border you start increasing as you can see in the triangular shape you increase you increase loads of squishy garter stitch so if you don't like a mindless garter stitch avoid and perhaps because there's a lot of garter stitch as you can see it gets very deep and at some point you reach the maximum width of the shawl so as you can see it's quite big and you will start stop increasing so the center portion of the shawl is actually straight this one here for this section you do not work increases you have this very simple eyelet motif. This is where I've placed like photograph to tell you uh, that if you want, you can just count the garter bumps and everything, just so that it's really easy to follow and you barely have to look at the pattern. At the end, there is an option to incorporate these little tassels, which I think are really fun. I would like to play a little bit more with tassels in shawls. Um, I think these are really cool. I believe one of my testers put tassels um, at the tip instead, which I found is really cool too. But I chose to place them here on the shawl body because I thought they kind of, they looked like really festive little things. And then again the simple eyelet pattern. And then you start to decrease to mirror the beginning. So again loads of the garter stitch and this portion is going so fast because obviously you have less and less stitches to go until you reach the opposite tip of the shawl and again you work the little shape here to get you into a point and voila i think that's it for the construction of the shawl the pattern has like a detailed step-by-step -step as an introduction so you understand what you need to do and again the I've really tried to make the pattern um, intuitive because it may look like you have a lot of things to do at the same time but actually the only thing you really need to track is the leaf motif because like I said the, um, the little plate cable you don't need to look at the chart you can just read your knitting and okay you, you're getting the right color that is the right color look how beautiful it is i'll talk about the yarn in a minute but yeah i've put a video to help you read your knitting i've put photographs and tips on how to read these sections so yeah there's also um video for how to attach the tassel with a little crochet hook it's really easy uh nothing <laughs> nothing special i just wanted to make my video so that you would um, actually get the size tassel that I did and how I put them myself if you want to replicate it as shown and yeah it's making this really beautiful blankety shawl which I really like and the border I can't get enough of this the shawl uses uh, about a thousand and 200 meters of fingering weight yarn. I do recommend that you pay attention to the meterage because some finger weight weight skeins have um, only 360 meters per 100 grams and you might run out of yarn. 
So do get uh, the meterage that is uh, written in the pattern and on Ravelry, uh, just to be sure. But yeah, it just makes this like really, really big, cozy blanket. So if you want to wear it over your shoulders, it gets really cozy and comfy. As you can see, it's getting quite low on my back and you can really rub yourself. And it, like this, this is really nice. And yeah, the other way I like to wear it is I'm basically folding the top part so that it's even squishier and warmer. And then you can wrap it like a normal triangle shawl and sort of flipping that into place. And yes, so it's really big and squishy and really for those big, big shawl lovers. Uh, I'm kind of strangling myself, but yeah, you can see how it looks if you just shove it around your head. Basically, you get a glimpse of the leaf and the cables and the tassel and the little eyelets as well. And it's just really so cozy and squishy. Um, the yarn that I use is a really sweet yarn. It's um, Mole View yarn, which is a dyer from Wales. It's, she is a natural dyer, and this is her Falkland um, fingering weight base. So Falkland Merino is uh, Merino from the Falkland Islands, and it's like so squishy and soft. This is non superwash, which made this really beautiful, plump, squishy garter fabric. And this is dyed with madder to get this really peachy, pinkish tone, which has like really nice variations in the yarn. So, so pretty. Um, I really enjoyed working with this yarn. Um, I think it is really cool for accessories because it is so soft and drapey, as you can see. And I mean, there's, there's a lot of fabric here, but the thing is so just really drapey it's really pleasant and I really enjoyed working with it as like I said it was rather plump and yeah um, again uh, make sure you get the gauge because you might run out of yarn if your gauge is tighter than mine although um, the gauge is 23 stitches per 10 centimeter in garter stitch which is fairly tight for a shawl gauge um, because I wanted something that was plump and not really uh, spread out. So if you get a tighter gauge than mine, like you, you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> but um, yeah, just a few things to keep in mind so that you have enough yarn is to actually get the right yardage and to uh, check the gauge or at least be careful that you're not knitting too tightly to dense off a fabric basically. But yeah, like I said, it is not complicated. Uh, all my testers did well. Um, some of them were beginners, didn't really um, weren't really familiar with cables, and they found the leaf motif really um, easy to comprehend at some point. Um, basically, throughout the middle of the show, you can memorize the leaf motif, and there it's really smooth sailing. Um, but yes. They used, uh, my testers, they used various types of yarn, variegated, Some, one of them used a gradient, which is absolutely beautiful. So I really encourage you to check their versions. Um, I want to say that an amazing yarn for the shawl seems to be Ulysse from the Herum Natura, the sport weight woolen spen. It just shows the, the cable and the leaf so well. It's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, a few ideas if you would like to make it a shawl. Um, so like I said, the link is in the description down below and there is 27% off the shawl as well for my birthday until next Wednesday. So yeah, if you're interested, do check it out. Um, I really, really love this pattern. It is quite um, unique in the way that I designed it. I mean, in my designing process and I just fell in love with the result. I just kind of winged it, which is rare for me, and the result just made total sense after I finished it. Um, so it is a rather special design for me, which is why I chose to use this one as a 
birthday release so I hope you like it um, I'm just gonna wrap myself around it because it started raining and so it just feels like it's right to wrap yourself in a shawl so yeah I'm just gonna stay like this <laughs> for the rest of the episode um, Sol in case uh, I didn't say it, but in case you don't remember, soul means willow in French. You are absolutely free to pronounce it like soul. Uh, it sort of is the same anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, because I just thought I really like willow trees and um, I just thought the dropping leaves kind of border matched the, uh, the name. So yeah really squishy and nice so that is it for the uh pattern release and the first day sale kind of thing um so like i said everything is in the description and now i am going to jump into my works in progress i will not really show you well i can just show it to you quickly my kate shoe sweater which you've seen last time which is the drop shoulder sweater um, with the lace border that I am currently designing that was a really ugly view of it but yay this one um, I have done quite a bunch of progress on it obviously like I have done all the, the body and the back and I'm currently on the front but yeah I'm not going to um, like I'm really matchy matchy color wise but I'm not going to um, spend too much time on it because basically it's just stocking it. So you will see it once there are some interesting things happening, uh, mostly around the neckline and on the sleeve uh, cuffs. So the actual knitting projects I wanted to share with you, the first one is another shawl. Um, something I, I just kind of winged. Um, I had so I had this yarn in my stash, which is whole scarn, obviously. But this is the tides range. So this is the seventy percent wool and thirty percent silk blend from Holst, which has this kind of mulled effect because obviously the silk remains a bit whiter, and it's much softer than the super soft range. And this is the colorway Magus. I assume you're supposed to roll the R. I don't know. But it's this really nice blue. And I had a sweater's quantity of it because I originally wanted to knit the Kyuru, I think it's called. The sweater that is published in, I think, the third edition of Lane magazine. It is uh, designed by Sari Nordland and it's um, a full on cabled sweater. And it's really pretty. But I just, I felt it wasn't right, like the yarn was not calling for that so maybe I will make that sweater in a different yarn but I had uh, like I have like five skeins five cakes of this uh, yarn and I've just I wanted to cast on something simple with it and I just thought uh, I don't really have a blue show and so I do love blue so why not and I've been wanting for a while to make myself a really um, simple uh, garter stitch shawl that I can wrap, uh, use as a wrap basically um, because I like, I like, I don't know if I can do it with this one, yeah, I like to wear shawls like this when I'm at home because it's just cozy and um, so if you don't know what I did, I just did a knot here. Um, I don't know, it's very outlandery. I know but it's like it's really cozy and it just sit and sits in place and in general in clothing I really like things that wrap and knots I don't know I like knotted tops and things like this and so it all kind of works together um, and I wanted uh, a really simple garter stitch shawl but you know you know I, I can't I can never keep it really simple so I started making this really simple triangle shape, as you can see, really basic. And at the center, I just worked a little cable. It's actually the same plate cable as this one. Really simple cable, 
really simple uh, garter, tab, cast on, border, eyelet increases. And then, <laughs> I don't know, I, I wanted to sort of add ornaments to it. I just couldn't keep it uh, simple, which was the original plan. So I started incorporating these and I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Yeah, just little twist. Basically, it's it's um, a little cable twist and it kind of looks like there's a knot on the on the fabric, which I think is really fun. And so I have a little dilemma with this because it is technically a design, but I'm not sure I'm going to actually make it into a design and a pattern because what I like about this is that I decided to just be random with the placement of these knotted cables. Um, so basically what I do is that I look at the shawl and I decide, okay, I want a knot um, here, here. and. Um, the way I'm doing it is that I'm placing markers. So you can see at the moment I'm working uh, three knots. Like I, they're not completely done yet, but there's one here, one here, and one here. And so I'm placing markers where I want the knots to be and working the cable motif between this marker and the rest of the shawl as usual. And so I like that. It kind of it kind of reminds me of, you know, when you have a pattern that is a guide, uh, for example, for color work you have, you would have a pattern that tells you like that does all the mass for you and uh, the general shape and everything and gives you instructions on how things work, but then you're free to do your own motif. And I've seen stuff in color work like this, like a pattern will uh, give you basically a blank chart and you can draw your own chart on it and then use the pattern um, with your own motif. And it's kind of the same principle because if I make this into a design, it will be sort of make up your own <laughs> version. Um, obviously the shaping, and the whole instructions and the cables are going to be um, written out as instructions, but then you would have this sort of randomness to it. So if you want, you can do like really a uh, few isolated um, types of um, knots, or uh, maybe you like something a little bit more geometrical and crowded, and so you would um, do more of them. Eventually, uh, these cables are going to change. Like, I think I'm going to keep doing this big garter stitch, occasional knot stitch, about the two thirds of the shawl. And then the last one is going to start like this, but then be a little bit more complicated um, knot in the end. You can't really see them well, but I'm just trying to... Yep, you can see I have locking stitch markers ready to place my knots. But yeah, so I don't know. What do you think of that? Do you, I think that that is quite fun <laughs> to be able to like draw your own shawl based on the same principle, but I'm not sure it's worth writing into a pattern. So yeah. Um, it might just be something personal that I keep for me because, yeah, I just wanted something simple in this yarn and it is really soft and it's going to be so cozy to wear. I'm going to really like it. And yes, I don't know. Tell me what you think about this, uh, this randomness. Thing. I don't know if I explain myself really clearly. Basically, okay, let's imagine I actually write it into a pattern. What it would be like is that you would have the instructions obviously for the show and for the cable motifs, but there will not be row by row instruction telling you 
uh, where to place the motif. You choose where to place them. Basically, that's how. That's how I'm doing it. <laughs> so that's how it would work. But yeah, I'm not so sure it's it's worth it. I don't know. Maybe once I do a little bit more progress on it and um, I can actually see what it looks like, I can uh, I can decide on whether or not it's going to remain a personal project or a design. As far as the yarn go, I really like how it looks. It's really squishy. It's not as wiry, uh, as super soft, um, and I can't wait to see how it goes when it's washed. Right now it's already really soft and making quite a nice fabric. And with the bad light you can't really see <laughs> the motifs, but uh, yeah, hopefully at some point I be, I'll be able to show you a little bit better what it looks like. Yeah. Um, in case this does turn into a design, um, I'll let you know <laughs> what I decide. But yeah, feel free to let me know what you think about this. Would a recipe type of pattern, is that something you'd you're interested in or do you really like to sort of have um, a standard and actually copy a sample or are you the type of knitter that likes to modify everything and would um, make up your own thing anyway? I think that is really interesting to see both sides of the creative spectrum. Um, yeah. The last work in progress I want to share with you is a little sock. So I needed some uh, TV series uh, knitting and I didn't have anything. Ew! I threw something. Oh, it's not. It was attached to the bag, to the project bag I'm using. I needed something simple and mindless and I didn't have a simple stocking uh, sock uh, as a whip for a little while now and I have a lot of yarn for that and I really should start making them especially a lot of self-striping yarn you know how, how much I love those and how I have a hard time resisting them I got this uh, I can't remember when. <laughs> this is a uh, yarn from Scrumptious Pearl, which is a Canadian dyer, and I really love her colorways. Um, she ha often has themed uh, collections, and this is a Harry Potter themed colorway. This is called Birdie Bots, so you know the, the candies. And I absolutely love the colors. And Surprisingly enough, I got her glam base, which has golden Stellina on it. I rarely get uh, Stellina bases because I'm not really a shiny person. <laughs> but I have I just um, put myself the shiny happy people song in my head. Um, but in that case, I thought that the golden Stellina really matched the colors. I just... I think it's perfect. I hope you can't hear the work uh, that's going on in the streets, but anyway. I thought the Golden Selena really, really worked. And so I started a little sock. I haven't done much yet, but uh, you can see how the colorway knits up. And simple stocking at sock. I'm gonna make um, basically a tube and then I will put in an after thought heel like I always do for stripy socks because I don't want to disturb the stripe sequence with the heel. I did a little bit of 2x2 two two rib and you can see how the color is and this is so so pretty and shiny. I really really like it. As usual I'm knitting my socks on 2mm needles, a 64 stitch because I noticed that I am um, I am knitting looser on wider circumference than what I used to, but when I'm on mag Magic Loop or DPNs, I am knitting even tighter than before. And so while when I started knitting socks, I had to um, do 60 stitches. Now I prefer to do 64. It's like this. Um, 
but yeah, I'm not complaining for the tighter gauge because tighter gauge means um, sturdier socks. So, yay, birdie bots by Scrumptious Pearl. And it is a beautiful colorway. I just wanted to show you because the color is so beautiful. Well, it's just a simple stockinette sock, so not much to say about it. Um, yes, so I think that is it as far as uh, actual knitting project goes. I do have a little yarn show for you. So, I have... Uh, I am constantly looking for a commercial yarns that are like I mean yarns that are affordable and that are um, new new to me <laughs> new to me brands um, and also commercial one because I like to share a variety of different uh, types of yarn and as you know I personally do not uh, want to support drops anymore um, I have a lot of it in my stash. I love the yarn that they make. I think it is pretty good quality um, for the price. I love that it's natural wool most of the time. But I really don't like their practices as far as um, plagiarism and taking designs from independent dyers and making them into their own free pattern. So, I really like sharing other types of commercial yarns that are super affordable and that, as far as I know, don't have such practices yet. So, a, a brand or sort of a more like a website that has been on my radar is Lana Grossa. So, if you remember, uh, few months ago I already got some yarns from them basically their tweed sock yarn which was completely Lerge from Fibertail's fault <laughs> she basically got the tweed sock yarn from them from Lana Grossa and uh, I completely copied her because I love tweed socks everything was beautiful it's great and I was really impressed by the uh, how nice the yarn was. It was really soft and really, really uh, affordable, not as cheap as drops, which, you know, probably means that people are better paid somewhere along the line, I hope. Um, but yeah, it was really nice yarn and they have a ton of different types of yarn. A lot of them are cotton, there are a few acrylic blends, but they also have nice wool ranges. And so wool and um, natural fibers because you're gonna see it's not just wool that I got. So I just was browsing their website and looking for yarns to try and I then saw a new pattern by Christina Danahy which everyone probably saw. It's the Minaret top. It's a crop top with a beautiful rib pattern. Love it. Love the color. Love everything. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. And I really want to make one for me. And I was looking for a possible yarn for that. Uh, well, I mean, I had this in my mind as I was browsing the Lana Grossa website. So, funny enough, the name of the website is Filati. Because Lana Grossa, as far as I know, is like spun in Italy. But the website is shipping from Germany. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, it's Filati dot com or dot fr in my case but yeah uh, they have reasonable shipping price from uh, to france uh, which is good uh, and yeah so i was on the website i saw this top the minaret top and and i saw this and if you saw the minaret top you're you're going to be seriously audrey you're again taking the same color as the sample yes i am but this is, like, to be fair, this is one of my favorite colors. And I know I might be saying that of every color that I get, but it is. <laughs> and um, I have a really hard time not getting the yarn, the color that the sample is in. Um, I don't, I have very poor projection um, skills as far as color goes, which is a nightmare for color work. Um, but anyway. I saw this 
and this is so this is slow wool lino so it's the range of lana grossa which is a hundred percent um ecological uh pure um fibers basically and so this is i think it's 90 percent. let me check 85 85 percent uh fine uh merino it's merino because uh, they have wool ranges and then they have merino as well this is merino and it says non-felting so i assume it means superwash uh your any german speaking person will confirm because i i think they translated uh literally because it says filzfrei filzfrei in german and they translated it to non-felting which i think means superwash um but do confirm if you uh, are german so 85 percent merino probably superwash and 15 percent linen and it makes this really cool shiny yarn with like blips of you can see like the linen vegetable matter that took the color differently this is the color 15 it's like a burgundy not really burgundy that's not burgundy i don't know if ellie from skandaria is watching it's not burgundy right it's not <laughs> it's like plumish purplish brownish stuff but in their website they did call it burgundy whatever this is a fingering weight because well it has 400 meters to 100 grams but it it looks really thick it looks really thick to me and plump and i think you could pretty much knit it as a sport weight gauge i'm wondering i think on ravelry it's it's a sport weight category things that make zero sense as far as yarn weights goes but i think it's really nice the color the color is yeah like this no no uh it's really really nice and i really like the effect that the 15 percent linen gives i really love it they have a lot of different colors um it's just 13 euros the skin so obviously not drops cheap but not hand dyed uh price either it's pretty good and it's really soft and i really like it so i got to i'm gonna make the minaret top out of it and if i like the result which I think I might, <laughs> judging from the skein. Um, I might get some more to make summery designs of my own. Like I can totally see a cardigan in that blend. They have lovely blue colors as well. And um, yeah, so this is again slow wool lino. And there's a little sheep on the label. I like the ribbon. It's a nice little packaging touch. But that's number one yarn that I am going to try from Lana Grossa. The second yarn that I got from them is actually not the Lana Grossa brand, but it's on the same website and it, the brand is Landlust, which uh, is new to me again. It looks like it's, um, it's uh, again, German brand, but spun in Italy. Uh, yeah, lots of exchange apparently in the fiber industry between German and Italy. But yeah, and this is so this is a sport weight yarn, it has 170 meters to uh, 50 grams, and this is a blend of so it's silk and uh, cotton, but I don't remember. Yeah, it's 50 50, it's 50 percent silk, 50 percent cotton, and it's like the sport weight yarn nicely spun i don't think it's gonna be that splitty for a plant-based yarn and it's really nice it's like a little bit shimmery it's quite soft uh, because of this silk i think it's gonna be very drapey and not as coarse as pure cotton but i found this really interesting this was uh i'm very sorry i don't remember the exact price i think it was somewhere around 8 euros for 50 grams, which for a cotton and silk blend is pretty, pretty good. Uh, definitely less than 10. I think it was around 8 euros, maybe less. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. And I'm trying to... So the name of the yarn is Sommerside. Sommerside, sorry, Germany. You can see. 
So definitely a very summery blend. And I got two colors. This is the beige, like the color number two. This is color number nine. I think this was a, a blue black, like the Nacht blue or something like this. Um, like a really dark blue. That has a little bit of black spun into it. You can't really see. But the yarn is really nice, the thread is really nice and uh, basically my idea is to make a um, tank top, so not for this summer but maybe for next summer, and like a color block tank top in this because I think it's going to be really drapey and yeah, so if you're looking for summery yarn, maybe this is one to try because at the moment we have a lot of really nice uh, summery type of uh, patterns that are coming out and I think this can be a really good idea because the yarn feels lovely, um, you know, 50% silk, 50% cotton, it's quite an unusual blend, um, it's nice. Again, they have a nice range of colour as well. So yeah, two pretty cool discoveries that I can't wait to start working on and I'm looking forward to seeing how they actually behave knitted up. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that and I'm definitely going to uh, uh, keep looking at these ranges and um, maybe try to incorporate them into more of uh, my knitting. So yeah, I think I have said everything for this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, a quick reminder that the shawl that I'm wearing the saw shawl which is new on Ravelry as well as all of my uh, knitwear patterns are currently 27% off with the code 27 for my birthday so yeah uh, feel free to go have a look at that and yeah I will see you in a couple of weeks before I leave for Romania I am going to spend a couple of weeks at the end of June uh, with my boyfriend in Romania if I get there because I need to go to Budapest first and then figure a way to go <laughs> to Romania from Budapest uh, which is in Hungary in case you don't know uh, is a trick uh, Bucharest is Romania because it's an R so Budapest is the other one and so it's Hungary which has no R at the beginning so there it is uh, in case that, that's the little trick we learn at school to remember which is which um, but yeah so I will see you just before I leave for that um, and yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you are having a lovely time that uh, where you are uh, the weather is nice either nicely transitioning into autumn or that spring is in full bloom uh, for you and yeah I wish you a really happy time and I will see you next time. Bye!